Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. These are plane adjustment mallets. They are tiny, they are cute, and today we're going to see what in the world do they do. You grabbed a plane and your mallet and you made adjustments on it. You can strike it in many different places and adjust the iron without having to have those little knobs and screws. It's very fast, it's very efficient, and very accurate. I've got a grooving plane here and it's taking just about the right amount of shaving. But if I want it to be a little bit less, I can actually tap on the back, set the wedge again. Now it will take a little bit lighter shaving. Really light shaving, I like that. But I really want a heavier shaving. For that, we can tap on the iron and extend it forward a little bit. Set the wedge again. And now, now we got a heavy shaving. And just like that, you can very easily adjust between backing it up and extending it forward to get exactly the shaving you want. There are several places you can strike the plane to adjust it. If I want to extend it forward, I tap the iron. If I want to retract it, I can either hit the nose or I can hit the heel, and that will actually back it up. Every time you adjust it, you're just going to want to set the wedge in a little bit deeper so it holds in. Also, on something like this with an open side, I can set the iron farther down into the body. Or on a wooden body plane, I can give it lateral adjustment by tapping the iron side to side, reset the wedge again. You'll also notice that the back of all of these come to a point. That point is there so that you can eject the iron. Most irons have this hook on the back. And with that, I can come in here and I can actually eject the iron with the mallet. It catches onto that so I can pull it out. So if it really gets set in there well and I can't back it out, I can always use the hook to then pull out the wedge. There are many, many different traditions to woodworking. And because of that, there are many, many different styles of plane setting hammers. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. The Japanese tended to have a more flat face on both ends. This is a London pattern, or it has a couple different names with the wedge down at the bottom. There are some that are very simple, some that are very fancy. They all have their own perfect uses and everyone's gonna want something a little bit different to fit their wants and desires. Many of them will also have a wooden face, though a lot of them come in brass or bronze, so you're not gonna be hurting the steel. Though many of them do actually come in steel. It doesn't cause that much damage, but yeah, over time you're probably gonna be mushrooming over the backs of your irons. As to irons, over time you're gonna get them with a lot of dents and dings in them. That's why many planes actually come with these things on the nose up here or sometimes back on the heel. Those are striker buttons where you can hit that and when that gets worn out, you can replace the button on the front or back. Sometimes those are even made out of metal. It is a skill to learn. It's something that takes a little bit of time and effort to actually master having the right amount of force. You don't want to hit it hard, you just want a light tap, and you want the right tap in the right place. And doing that means it does take some work. It does take some skill to do it right. But once you learn it, it is incredibly fast. Just a couple taps and you're adjusted and ready to go. Any wooden body plane then becomes a lot of fun. It's a skill you gotta learn. Even with some of the metal bodies with the regular adjustments mechanism, sometimes I will find myself grabbing a mallet and tapping them around because I find it to be a little bit easier. Sometimes I'll get a much more fine adjustment. Especially with the lateral adjuster, sometimes you bump it and it moves it too far and then you move it back and you're back and forth and back and forth. With a plane mallet, I can just give it a light tap and I can move it just a little bit and I can have a very controlled amount of movement. Having a plane adjustment mallet, even with a metal body plane, can be a very useful tool. When it comes to really fine woodworking, a lot of times you want that high accuracy adjustment. You want a very, very micro adjustment. That's why I love the fine thread adjusters from Reed Planes. Um, I have a whole video on those, but those don't fix the lateral adjustment. And in that case, a plane adjustment mount will do that for you. And Jeff from Reed Planes, who makes the adjusters and lots of other things I really love, uh, he actually is starting to make the planes. He's starting off with making a block plane and bringing back Reed Planes, which I'm really excited. It's one of the reasons why I, I like his stuff is I'm trying to encourage him to bring back these planes. But uh, he really relies on a lateral adjustment from the plane mallet. And so uh, sometimes they're a little hard to find and sometimes it's hard to find the style you want. And so he said, well, okay, then we'll make our own. Uh, so he has made three different mallet heads so you can make your own and fit it to your style and exactly what you want. He's offering them in three different styles. This is the London pattern, although it goes by a couple other names, uh, that's the one I know it by the most. Um, and this is more the traditional size and style for the London pattern. It has an open face, that way you can make your own wooden plug for it, or you could put something else in there. And what you wanna do with this is put it in the microwave or put it in the oven and shrink it down 
take all the moisture out and you can put it in and that way once it gets a little bit of moisture it expands and fills in this and no glue is needed. Then there's my favorite. This is the small London pattern. It's a very lightweight, gives you a little bit more accuracy. This one's the one I really like. Um, but again, personal preferences. And then a lot of people love the Japanese style, and that's what we have here. So you've got a Japanese side. This one's fairly heavy. It's actually about the same weight as this one, uh, just a little more compact. And some people really love the Japanese style, so uh, there you go. All three of them come unpolished, so if you like that sand cast look, uh, you can get that, or you can file them down, smooth them, and polish them, and make them look really cool and shiny, and do whatever modifications you want to them. The idea is that you can make one that fits your style and the way you want to work, and you can have a mallet that says who you are. And then you can put on whatever handle and shape and style you want to, and you can make it yours exactly. The handles for these come in every different shape and size, and there are lots of different traditions to them. Everyone has their own perfect size and shape that they really like. Some people love having a large swell on the back that kind of fits in the palm of your hand. This one is actually a chasing mallet, but this handle style you'll see on a lot of English style mallets. This one is a little bit closer to the standard London pattern. They kind of like that octagonal shape. You'll see that on a lot of chisels and heads. It's that standard hammer size and shape that you, you kind of like, and it's got a good feel to it. One of my favorites is just the standard oval. It's just an oval cross section, small up here by the neck, and then tapering out to a flat handle. You can have fun with it and make it exactly what you want. That's one of the reasons why I love the reed mallet heads, because you can make the handle that fits your style and what you like and how you want to work with it. Using a plane adjustment mallet is a really interesting skill, and once you master it and you know what you have, uh, you can do some really cool things and you can make some very fine adjustments by just the amount of tapping and knowing what that is uh, is kind of one of those feelings you just have to experiment with and play with. Like, like a lot of other hand tool skills, you can only learn it by doing it. So grab a plain adjustment mallet and make it yours and have a little bit of fun with it. If you do want to buy one of the reed mallet heads, you better do that quickly. They're probably going to sell it pretty fast. And I don't know when they'll be back in stock because the foundry where they are cast is temporarily closed. So if you want them, hop on that quickly. I don't know about you, but I love learning about old skills that used to be very common that have kind of disappeared. Once you master these skills, you can try things in a different way and experiment and play with things and have fun that hasn't been had in a very long time. So if you do have any questions or thoughts, things that I should have mentioned, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and thank you for that. Anytime you hit a comment down below or you hit the like button, the share, subscribe, all those things, it does help us out. It really helps us get in front of more people, helps the channel to grow, and helps more people find out about what exactly is a plain adjustment mallet. That does mean a lot, so thank you for that. And I do read through all the comments and I answer as many of them as I can get to. If you'd like to take it one step farther, there are a bunch of people over here that are scrolling on the side. Those are the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer, so thank you. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that, you can find out more about Patreon down in the description down below. There are special perks for both, and we try to do regular hangouts and things like that. So thank you. Without patrons, members, we wouldn't exist. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. The plane looked at the plane adjustment mallet and said, hmm, baby, you move me.